I'll be testing the North Face Wawona 6 for its ease of setup, its base area, rain and wind protection, vestibule usage, and much, much more. Before I take you through the actual testing itself, here's just a couple of unboxing shots. I bought my Wawona 6 from Amazon, although you can get it from like REI or Backcountry as well. So this is me unboxing my Wawona 6. Here's what it looks like brand new out of the box and you get this small product tag right here. After taking everything out, like so, I got the tent body right here. This is the orange rainfly. Here are the poles in a separate carry bag. Here are the stakes, guidelines, and instructions in another smaller carry bag. And finally, here's the bigger orange carry bag. I also took out all the poles, stakes, and guidelines, and I got these four poles, these 14 stakes, plus two of these orange guidelines. For the ease of setup, here's a quick time lapse that you can watch. And first, I'm gonna go through a few things that I liked about this tent setup. For one, I liked that I could set up the entire Wawona 6 on my own, and I'm not even very tall, I'm only about 5 foot 3. It didn't take me very long too, the entire setup, including staking and guying out the tent, took me a about 20 minutes, and I really loved all the color coding all around the tent. Each pole is fully color coded, all the pole sleeves are color coded, and even the pole clips, webbings, and rainfly grommets were fully color coded. If you need more info on this setup, I put together this step by step guide, which you can find on my channel if you need it. But for now, let's go through the cons of this setup. First, for cons, during the setup I found the orange pole sleeves a little bit long and each of them snagged between one to three times. Second, and I think the biggest setup con of all, is that when I was trying to set up the orange poles, this last corner here and only this corner was ridiculously difficult for me to set up. It was extremely tight, I had to not only unstake that corner plus the two corners next to it, and I also had to use all my strength just to get the pole into the grommet. Third, the rainfly of this Wawona 6 has a lot of fabric and pole clips, which always catch either on the tent fabric or the poles. So setting up the rainfly on my own takes me two attempts, sometimes even three attempts at getting it up, which really slows down the setup process quite a bit. On the other hand, for most tents, I'm actually able to set up the entire rainfly on my own no problem at all. And the last con is that the north face didn't give me enough stakes and guidelines. For guidelines, I got 6 pre-attached guidelines, plus 2 of these unattached ones. But even with these, I'm still short about 3 guidelines, one for this window and two more for these two vents. And if I want it to fully stake down and guy out the entire tent, I'm short about 9 stakes. As for the ease of take down and pack away, unlike the setup process, I never had any issues with my Wawona 6, and the entire process takes just 14 minutes. It's so user friendly because the carry bag is really nice, it's top loading, and the opening of the bag is super big, so you can easily get everything in. If you want to know how I pack away my Wawona 6, you can check out the separate setup video as well. For the base area, I measured the length of this Wobona 6 to be about 116 inches, and I measured the width to be about 94 inches. This gave me a total base area of about 76 square feet. Sadly though, my Wobona 6 was quite a few inches smaller than the marketed dimensions of 120 by 96 inches, or a base area of about 80 square feet. So mine was about 5% smaller than it should be. But despite the smaller than marketed base area, I could still fit 6 regular pads in my Wawona 6. Here's me inflating my sleeping pads, and here's what having 6 pads looks like. Of course, with 6 pads, you would have to sleep shoulder to shoulder like this, and as you can see here, all my pads are basically side by side with each other, so it's a very tight fit. There is this small space here, but that's not going to be enough to fit much of anything. I definitely do not recommend fitting 6 people in here because it's just so tight, especially if you have to sleep at the sides of the tent. I never like sleeping at the sides of any tent, and in this Wawona 6, my hand would touch the wall of the tent when I raise my arm up, and my head definitely grazes the wall when I sit up. So to me, it feels a little claustrophobic. Instead of 6 pads, I was actually able to fit two almost queen-sized beds 
inside this tent. Here's me inflating my two queen beds. Here's what they look like inside the Wawona 6. And here's what four people would look like inside the tent. Honestly, even with just two queen beds, it somehow still felt pretty tight at the sides. My hand would still graze the wall when I raised my arm up, and here's a closer look at what sleeping at the sides would look like. Not exactly the most spacious. Here's a couple more things to take note of. First, both my mattresses aren't exactly a true queen size of 80 by 60 inches. You're actually a little smaller and I'll put the dimensions of both mattresses on the screen here. And even though they're both slightly smaller than a queen, the fit inside this Wawona 6 is already very, very snug. Both beds touch the sides of the tent, and there's only a few inches of leftover space between them. So there's probably no way to fit two actual queen beds in here. On top of that, with just these two queen beds inside the tent, there's barely enough space left over for me to walk around in the tent. So my recommendation is to fit at most one queen bed in this tent, and here's what it looks like. I wouldn't recommend having your mashers touch any of the walls, so one queen bed is probably the max. Not two, for sure. You can also fit a twin bed or another single pad beside this queen bed if you want to. The peak height inside this Wawona 6 is about 77 inches, and of course I'm not very tall so I can stand up completely upright under the peak height no problem at all. It's also not the tallest peak height though, so I can easily reach the top of the tent by just raising my arm up. Also, the tent shape of this Wawona 6 is a dome-shaped tent, so just take note that the peak height is only at the center. In fact, when I take just two small steps away from the peak height, my head would touch the side of the tent right here. Unlike a cabin tent with the vertical sidewalls, where I can walk really close to the walls and even stretch my arms out, the walls of this dome-shaped Wawona 6 slant inwards a little bit like every other dome tent, so I can't really walk around the tent as much. This is as best as I can. Also, when I stretch my arms out, it touches the sides of the tent very easily. But there's one really cool wall in this Wawona 6, which is the front wall. It's actually completely vertical because of the extra pole that extends the tent fabric upwards. So I can walk really close to this wall thanks to the vertical shape. On top of that, the extra pole also pulls the tent fabric outwards, giving me much more livable space nearer the front of the tent. I think you can see it better without the ray fly. Okay, so this is me going to stand in front of the wall, and notice how I'm able to stand completely upright against the wall? That's how vertical it is. And this is the part in front of the wall that gives you a little more livable space than any other regular dome tent. You see it, right? Moving on to the vestibule area, here's my own personal measurements. To summarize, the longest length of the vestibule comes in at about 99 inches. The shortest length of the vestibule at the top here comes in at about 56 inches, and the longest width of the vestibule comes in at about 84 inches. After doing a little calculation with these numbers, plus some other numbers that I can quickly flash on the screen right now if you're interested, well, the total base area of this Wawona's vestibule is a whole 14% bigger than marketed, coming in at a whopping 51 square feet, so a huge thumbs up to the Wobona 6 for this. Now, for the vestibule sizing, I've got a couple of my REI chairs right here, and we're gonna set this up and see how it fits in the Wobona's vestibule. Okay, so this is my REI Kemp X chair, which has been rebranded to the Skyward chair, and this is my REI Kemp Extra chair, which is one of the biggest camping chairs that I have, and both these chairs fit perfectly into the vestibule with a ton of leftover space for even a camping table. When I rearrange both these chairs like this, they fit really perfectly as well, so you get tons of flexibility on how you want to store your stuff in the vestibule. The height inside the vestibule is pretty consistent throughout the entire vestibule, but it does taper down a little bit towards the end. This is how it looks like from the outside, and this is how it looks like from the inside. The side of the vestibule nearest the inner tent has a peak height of about 74 inches, and it slowly tapers down all the way to the other side, which has a height of about 65 inches. So overall for the vestibule, there was a ton of livable space, and I was very impressed by it. 
Moving back to the inner tent, this Rona 6 has three windows in the tent. Let's talk about these two side windows first, and here are some pros and cons. Here's what each of these side windows look like up close. Here's all the mesh, and there's actually no way that I could open them from the inside. So, whenever I wanted to open these side windows, I had to go out of the tent and open them like so. Why? I'm, <laughs> I'm not really sure either. But anyway, to open these windows, there's one zip and one velcro strip on each side of each window. And to keep these windows open, you'll get these two toggles at the top to tie the window fabric up. There's no zipper or velcro at the bottom of each window though, but there is this guy out loop at the bottom, so you can guide this window out for some ventilation. When open, each window measures about 69 inches in length and 16 inches in width, so not the biggest. However, I did like that there's a little versatility in opening the windows like this. And also, the zippers on the windows are SBS. I found them to be completely snag-free and good quality. The last window is actually at the back of the tent, and while I liked that I could open and shut this window from the inside of the tent, the process was a little bit annoying. I first had to unzip the window, then unzip the outer fabric, then tie that fabric up using these two toggles at the bottom of the window, and then finally I get to zip up the window. When open, this last window measures about 42 inches in length by 37 inches in width, so not super big and also the storage pockets kind of block your view a little bit. But I did like the SPS zippers though, they're completely snag free as well. Moving on to the tent doors, this Rona 6 has two of them, and again I'll give you all the pros and cons that I could think of as well. This is the front door of the Wawona 6. Notice how it's completely snag free. I needed to use only one hand to unzip the entire door and unzipping it takes just three seconds. After that, to keep the door open, you gotta roll the fabric up neatly and tie it to the top with these two toggles. When open, this front door has a longest length of 60 inches and a longest width of 58 inches. So basically it's pretty big and it's about three times my size. This front door also measures 70 inches from the ground to the top of the door, which is also much taller than my height. So when walking in and out of the Wawona 6 through this front door, I never had to duck at all, which is super nice. I also love how zipping this door up takes only three seconds as well. It's completely catch-free. The zippers are made of SBS. I do wish it could have been YKK, but SBS isn't too bad. And I love how a good three quarters of this front door, anything above here, is made of mesh for tons of ventilation. The mesh looks fine and high quality, and I think it could be Noceum mesh. As for cons, well, I don't think this front door has any of them. I loved it and it's really great. Now, this is the back door of the Wobona 6. I like that it's completely snag free, takes about three seconds to zip and unzip as well, and the zippers are the same as the front door. There are these SBS zippers, and that's it for the pros. Now, here are some cons. First, and I found this to be the most annoying. To keep this door open, you gotta unzip not just the door fabric, you gotta unzip the inner window fabric as well. Then you gotta tie up the inner window fabric first before you can tie up the door fabric. And that's because there's only the same two toggles for tying both the window and door fabric up together. If you try to roll both the door and window fabric up together, you won't be able to tie it up with the toggles because the toggles will be stuck somewhere in between. When opened, this back door is actually really quite small. It measures just 42 by 37 inches. And here's what it looks like when I stand in front of it. It also measures just 48 inches from the ground to the top of the door. So even if you're not tall like me, you would still have to duck down quite a bit to get through the door. And also, I wish that the North Face would have color coded the door and window zippers. Right now, they're just all orange in color and I kept pulling on the wrong zipper. Onto the vestibule doors, this Wawona 6 has two vestibule doors, one on the right, one on the left, and they're both exactly the same. When I was unzipping each of the vestibule doors, they were completely snag-free, one-handed, and took three seconds as well. To keep these doors open, each vestibule door comes with two toggles by the side to tie the door fabric up. Each of these doors measures about 53 inches in width and they were about three times my size and each door also measured about 58 and a half inches from the ground to the top of the door. Not exactly super tall, but it was okay. I still had to duck a little bit to get in and out of the vestibule. When I was zipping up the vestibule doors though, I found that this rain flap or storm flap 
from the outside tend to get in the way of the zipper track. Not always, but only sometimes. The zippers are SBS as well, so decent quality, and each door has two of them. For pockets, this Wobona 6 has nine of them in total. There are four pockets over the small back door, three pockets on the window fabric of the back door, plus two more pockets at the sides here, one at each side. Unlike some of the more budget-friendly tents like Coleman, I love that all these pockets are protected by either the back door fabric or the ring fly fabric so that there won't be any leaking into the tent through the pocket seams. The positioning of the pockets is pretty smart. On top of that, I really like that I had some pockets that I could access when sitting down, like the back door pockets and side pockets, and also more pockets up top that I could access when standing up. For loops, this Wobona 6 has also quite a few of them. There's one loop right at the very top of the tent at the center, plus four more loops around it, like so. Also, there's another three more loops in the vestibule, so you can hang tons of stuff from all these loops or some lanterns for lighting at night. For wind protection, I was able to test this Wobona 6 out in light to slightly more moderate winds of about 10 to 15 miles per hour, and it held up like a champ. I had almost the entire tent guided out, so that really helped. I love that each length of this Wobona 6 can be held down by 5 guy lines, plus one more guy line at the vestibule, so a whopping 11 guy lines in total. Also, this Wobona is mostly dome shaped, which sheds wind pretty well. I have a friend who gave me his old Wobona 6 after using it through crazy winds of like 50 miles per hour. Yes, the poles ended up bending quite a bit, but they never broke and I was even able to set up and continue using the old Wobona 6, so very sturdy in the wind. I put my Wobona 6 through about one hour of fairly light rain, not super heavy and it looked something like this. After the hour was up and the rain stopped, I didn't find a single leak inside this Wobona 6 at all and it held up super well. Also, for light rain ventilation, I found that I could leave this window vent open and no water got into the tent through this vent. Unfortunately, I forgot to leave this smaller vent open, but I'll do so in a bit in the heavy rain test, so stay tuned for that. And because the light rain test just wasn't heavy enough, here's my heavy rain test. rained super heavily for about three hours and I think I put every single part of this Wobona 6 through an insane amount of heavy rain like so. In fact, it rained so heavily that after a few hours, my entire yard was flooded, so flooded that the water was up to my ankles, like this. And when I checked my Wobona 6, I found that the entire bottom of the tent was completely submerged in the water. And one of the corners of my tent was even sitting in like two inches of water, like so. After the rain stopped, I checked in on the tent and as you can see, there's not a single drop of water inside the tent. I also checked the seams at the corners and this was the corner that was like submerged in two inches of water. Honestly, there isn't any leakage at all. Even when I pressed down on the corner seam gently, there was no dampness at all. I also checked the rest of the seams, the flooring and all the fabric around the tent and none of them leaked despite being exposed to so much rainfall. For ventilation, I found that these two window vents didn't leak at all despite the heavy rain plus relatively moderate winds. But just bear in mind that the rain fly doesn't overlap the window mesh very much, probably only 4 to 5 inches or so, like this, so this might be an issue in horizontal rain. 
On top of that, this Wobona also has two of these smaller vents. I notice that they're kind of almost facing downwards and it's the perfect angle that water doesn't go into the tent at all. After the heavy rain stopped, I checked the vent from the inside of the tent and the mesh was completely dry. And apart from these four vents in the tent, there's also a small gap between the rain fly and the ground at the vestibule. The ground is a little bit flooded, but you still get ventilation. And if you want to know the breaking point of this Wawona 6, well, I found it after putting this Wawona 6 through a whopping three afternoons of really heavy rains. And after the third day of heavy rain, I noticed that this wall with the back door was slightly damp from the inside. It didn't drip into the tent or anything, but my hand was slightly damp from touching the wall. And it was only this wall that was slightly damp after the three day heavy rain test. The rest of the walls were still completely dry from the inside. I could be wrong about this, but I think it's because this back wall was exposed to the most rain. For the sides of the tent, there's this guy out point on each side that allowed me to guy out this window vent, which I think gave the Wawona a little more rain coverage. On the other hand, the back wall doesn't have a guy out point. The rain fly is much closer to the tent body, so less rain coverage and more water over the tent. Hence, the slight dampness. Moving on to hot day ventilation, I like to take the rain fly off on sunny days, and if you do so, you get a nice mesh roof for stargazing. And I really love the mesh of the front door. There's so much of it for lots of ventilation. The rest of the walls have a little less mesh though, and here's what they look like. For the materials used to create this Wawona 6, well, the flooring is made of 150 denier polyester with a hydrostatic head rating of 1200 millimeters, while the rest of the tent body in the rain flight is made of 75 denier polyester, so half as thick, but they also have the same waterproof rating. All five poles of the Wawona 6 are made of high quality DAC aluminum, the zippers are SBS, and the holes of the mesh are very fine. I also looked at the quality of the seams and I found them to be nicely double stitched and consistent all around the tent. I didn't find a single loose thread at all. All the seams were properly reinforced when they needed to be, especially at the corners which is attached to the stake loops and pole grommets. For portability, I measured the pack size of my Wawona 6 to be about 26 by 16 by 10 inches. Here's what it looks like beside my Coleman two-person sundome tent and also one of my 32 ounce Nalgene bottles. And it also comes with a hand strap at the top plus another smaller strap by the side and a plastic flap that covers the contents of the bag. I wish they made the strap at the top a little bit bigger so I can more easily sling it over my shoulder and this will bonus 6 weighs about 19 and a half pounds for everything. For pros, I think the best thing about the North Face Wawona 6 is easily the phenomenal rain protection. I was really lucky to have been able to put this tent through the worst rain I've seen all year, three afternoons of non-stop heavy pouring flooding rain, and this Wawona survived much better than any other family camping tent I've seen so far. On top of that, there's no seam sealing required for this scent. I checked the entire Wawona 6 and it was perfect really. So basically, all the rainfly seams were taped, and on the inside of the tent, you can kind of make out the rainfly from the inside, and all the seams not covered by the rainfly have been seam taped. Yes, every single one. It's awesome. It's so rare to find a tent with all the proper seam taping. Wind protection, in addition to rain protection, is great as well. And we're just getting started with the pros. I found this Wawona 6 to be made of very high quality materials. In addition to all the materials I mentioned in section 26 of this video, I want to expand a little bit more on the quality of the poles because that was really impressive. All the poles of this Wawona 6 are made of aluminum, not just regular aluminum, but top of the line DACMX, which is stronger and sturdier. In the weeks that I spent testing my Wobona 6, through crazy rains and some winds, none of my poles even bent at all, even in the slightest. I also really loved how easily they snapped together and stayed together, which makes this tent all the more user-friendly. 
The vestibule of this Wogona 6 is also incredible, one of the biggest I've ever seen in a family camping tent. The two black poles of the Wogona 6 create this awesome vestibule with fairly consistent height throughout, and the entire vestibule, even the shortest height all the way at the end, is actually still slightly taller than my height, so I found that I could stand completely upright throughout the entire vestibule. For more info on the vestibule, check out these sections. I love that the vestibule also comes with two doors for lots of cross ventilation. That plus the two inner tent doors, when you open all of them, you kind of get a huge wind tunnel for lots of ventilation. And this is with the rainfly still on the tent. And if you take the ring fly off, you get even more ventilation. And the front door is huge. I love that I can take even entire double pads in and out of tent. Plus the wall that the front door is on is also amazing and I've gone through all of the incredible pros in these sections of this video. There's also a decent amount of storage options with nine pockets and eight loops, although there aren't any other features like gear lofts, room dividers, and e-ports. Before we move on to the cons, if you found this video helpful so far, it would mean so much if you could help me hit that like button. And also, if you happen to buy a tent because of one of my reviews, could I just request that you use my affiliate links in the description below? It would really help the channel out so I can continue to buy these tents and to produce these kinds of unbiased reviews for you. Thank you and I really appreciate it. As for cons, I think there are two bigger ones and one smaller fixable con. First, I think the base area is easily one of the smallest I've ever seen in a six person tent. You can technically fit six people, but I recommend fitting a maximum of three to possibly four adults for sure. Also, I found it a tad annoying that the two windows are accessible only from the outside of the tent. If you have the windows open and then it starts raining, you gotta run out of the tent and zip the windows shut from the outside before coming back into the tent. A bit annoying if you ask me. And I also found the setup of this Wawona 6 to be very tight the first time around at this corner here. To fix this, I recommend breaking in this tent in your yard or your house before going camping. Now that we're done with the pros and cons, here is my recommendation to you. I think this Wawona 6 is one of the best family camping tents in the summer. There's a ton of ventilation, although this also means that there's too much mesh for you to use it in much colder weather. But for summer, it's absolutely perfect. And if you're expecting tons of rain and wind, don't worry because this Wawona 6 has got you covered in the worst of rainstorms. I think it's one of the best all-rounder tents for any kind of weather in the summer, good or bad weather, and I'd highly recommend it. But wait, I say it's one off, but is it the best tent for you? If you want to see how this North Face Wawona compares to other similar camping tents on the market, I highly recommend that you watch these videos that I'll leave up on the screen here. Thank you for watching this review video and I'll see you in the next one.